Hi guys, thanks for coming back to another video. We're going to continue discussing uh, the first coming morning lamb sin offering versus the second coming evening lamb trespass offering um, that we started talking about some time back. If we go and take a look at these videos, um, first time that we brought up the morning and evening lamb was with this particular video here. Um, but we were talking about some information that we put out way back here. Now in this particular video here, we talked about uh, the times that the Lord had given us over the last year and a half, maybe two years, that the Lord has been talking to us about the twins. He's been talking to us about the two boys. Um, any of you all that's been following this channel for some time, you've, this is not the first time you've heard about these two boys. The first time we heard about it was the Lord saying, my daughter is going to have twins. Um, that was the first time. The second time, as we pressed into him, we found out the little boys were from him. We found out that they are his, that they are family connections. We found out that they are two boys, that they are twins. We found out that they have dual purposes. And so, um, and so we are understanding from, through some pressing in with the Lord and some revelation that was given to me that they are connected in some way to the two witnesses. Okay. Now, a lot of people got upset over that because when I said the Lord Jesus' name and I brought up the witnesses um, as being one of the witnesses, um, I, you know, it was, he's the only, he's the only begotten son, he's already died, you know, all of this and, and what have you. And guys, I'm not arguing the fact that he, that he is not the only begotten son. I believe that he is the only begotten son. Um, but I think what we're going to find and what we have slowly started to um, to show in Scripture is that there is indeed two times um, that the Christ will come and be some type of an offering. One was a sin offering. The sin offering was the Lord Jesus Christ himself when he was here. But the other offering, which has not happened yet, is the trespass offering and so that is what we're talking about that is what we're learning about that is what we're being shown in scripture that there is a morning lamb and there is an evening lamb okay so we've we've ever since that video you can see er everything that the Lord has been leading us and guiding us up to this point so when we got here, we started talking about the two lambs, the morning and the evening lambs. And where we found this was in Scripture, um, in Numbers 28, verse 4, where it says, The one lamb shall thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb offer in the evening. Okay, so we understand that there are two lambs here. Um, so a morning lamb and an evening lamb. Now, as we went through some of these other videos and we started talking about the morning lamb and the evening lamb, then we have already understood that Jesus Christ on the cross from his crucifixion when he was nailed onto the cross, the Bible tells us the time that he was on that cross. So we know already he was the morning lamb. Okay, he was the sin offering. Okay, and that is what we're very, very familiar with. But what a lot of people are not familiar with and don't understand is the evening lamb. It is the trespass offering, and that offering has not happened yet. Okay, so from that point, we started talking about, let me just go ahead and recap while we have this particular page open, because I probably won't be going back into it again. Uh, the numbers and patterns of Christ, which we were understanding is the 11246. This particular video is an introduction video. I'm sure we are going to be getting into that um, even more. And I think that you will see how these numbers are going to start tying in and, and pointing um, a little bit more to our evening lamb and who he is. Um, 
And then when we went in to talk about the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, which is the name the Bible calls the tabernacle, why would they call it the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness? Why would they not just say the tabernacle or the tabernacle in the wilderness? But that's not what they said. They identified it as the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness. And in this particular video, we understood, oh, let me pull up a bigger picture. We understood that this was representing the Lord Jesus Christ almost 1400 years before he was even born. We discussed that God did indeed have a plan um, and he already had this all worked out before well before anything had occurred. Um, we talked about the one-third, one-third, one-third. We talked about the two sets of curtains here, one going into the holy place where the candlesticks, showbread, and altar were, the incense, and then one going into the holy of holies where the Ark of the Covenant was that housed the presence of God. So um, we talked about that these curtains represented um, certain things about the lambs, okay, about the Christ. The first set of curtains, and if I pull up my notes here, and I'm just going to briefly talk about it. If you guys are interested, you can go back into that video. There's a lot of information in there. But one of those sets of curtains, okay, had um, curtains that were 30 cubits long, okay, 4 cubits wide, and 11 curtains. One set of these was 30 cubits and 11 curtains. Well, 30 is the year that Jesus started his ministry. Um, we know that because the Bible is very detailed about his age. And then the 11 curtains represent the 11 apostles. Now, you're going to say, well, oh, wait a minute now. He had 12 apostles. Well, that's correct. He did have 12 apostles. Um, but he only had 11 loyal apostles, okay? Judas um, sold sold the Lord's um, location for 30 pieces of silver. Um, and then we know that he actually killed himself after that. So the 11 curtains represent the good and loyal apostles. Um, the length of the curtains of 30 cubits long represent his age. And so if this is a tabernacle of witness for the Christ and he was a morning lamb, then what do these curtains represent? And as we go in to scripture in Exodus 26, we see that the other set of curtains are 28 cubits long. <coughs> and there's 10 curtains there. But the, but the directions in the Bible says to sew five together and to sew the other five curtains together. And so that's very interesting because when we think of ten and broken down into two sets of five, um, the ten virgins typically come to mind. The five wise and the five foolish. And so if 30 cubits on the first set of curtains represents the age that Jesus started his ministry, then I can only assume that 28 is the age that the evening lamb has started his ministry. Now we kind of talked a little bit too that if um, that a lot of us are thinking and understanding and believing, okay, that the Antichrist is alive and well on this earth right now. And if that is the case, then we must know and understand if the evening sacrifice has not been done yet and it is reserved for the end time, if the Antichrist is here, then we have to believe, okay, that the evening lamb is alive and well on this earth today. So, as a recap, and then coming back to what I want to talk to you all about today is just going in and expanding a little bit deeper in regards to the first coming, the morning lamb sacrifice, who was the sin offering, which we know was the Lord Jesus Christ. This whole column right here is going to be on nothing but the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And we're not going to go through each one of these, but we're going to take a look at some of the things that we have identified here. And then you guys can um, go in and do your own deep study. 
So if we're looking at the Ark of the Covenant here, or even or even here, you can see the two um, the two cherubs that are there um, with their wingtips touching each other uh, in the center, right on top of the the uh, the whole the uh, Ark of the Covenant. Um, that's what we're talking about there. Those two things right there. And so what is really interesting um, is two coming out of one. Two coming out of one. Okay. I, I need for you to keep that in mind. Two coming out of one. Um, so if the Lord, if, if Father God pulled out of his chest one son and broke him in half, he now has two. We recall that Adam came as one person, but out of Adam came Eve. There is now two, okay? It's the same, it's the same thing. Out of this piece of gold came two cherubs. Out of one piece of gold came two. Out of one piece of silver came two. Out of one man, Adam, came to Adam and Eve, okay? Out of the Son from God came to, okay? The morning lamb and the evening lamb, okay? Um, let's continue on. Let's continue on. Uh, how about one stone hidden in the, bre in the priest's breastplate called Urim, and Urim means light. Jesus said, I am the light. And then another stone hidden in the breast, priest's breastplate called Thummim. And Thummim means perfection. Now recall what Paul said up here. That we look through the glass darkly until perfection comes. Perfection. Thummim. Protection. The two stones. The two stones. Okay. How about the two ta the two sets of um, commandments? One tablet of stone with half the law upon it. The other tablet of stone with half the law upon it. How about the meat offering in the morning and the meat offering in the evening? The fact that the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross in the spring during Passover. The evening lamb will be in the fall. There is one law for the sin offering, which is death, and the same law for the trespass offering, death. But in Psalm 71, it shows that he is brought up again from death. He is brought up again from death. Now we talked about in that one, we talked about in that one video when I said, we were talking about the witnesses and how was this all working in. And I know the Lord had told me Jesus was a witness. Okay. Do we know? I don't, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. I'll have to talk about that in another video. How about one column that supports God's temples called Boaz? And Boaz means kins, kinsman redeemer. We know Jesus was our kinsman redeemer. The other one is Jackin meaning to be established. One staff is called beauty, and beauty is broken and sold for 30 pieces of silver. We talked about that already, about the 11 curtains. Only 11 were loyal apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, because Judas did what? Right? Another staff is called bands, which means foolish shepherd. From the house of Joseph, again. There's one son who always kept the commandments. The sin offering, Jesus. And there's another son called the prodigal. The one who knew what to do, but didn't do it. That's the trespass offering. That's the trespass offering. So here's where it's talking about the curtains. How about the former and the latter rain? Again, he begins his ministry at the temple at 30 years old. 
He finishes his ministry at the temple at 50 years old. So there's a lot of information here um, you guys can take a look at, but this last one I want to talk to you about. On the walls of God's temple is cherubim. It, he, it, the cherubim that's in there has two faces. One face is a lion. It's facing a palm tree. And the other part of the one cherubim that has the other face, the other face is a man. So you have a lion facing a palm tree on one side and a man facing a palm tree on the other side. It is one cherub with two faces. Okay, we're coming back to that one is two thing. Okay, one is two. We know he was a lion at his first coming. He's going to be a man at his second coming. So when we're saying that Yes, we believe the Antichrist is alive and well on this earth. We're, we're staring at the end times. We know where we are in regards to timing and timeline and everything else. Um, if the Antichrist is here, the evening lamb is here. Okay? The evening lamb is here in the form of a man. Okay? All right. So let's come back up to um, this other scripture. I want to go into a little bit here on this Micah 5, uh, verse 2. Um, many of you all know that I've been sick and I've, uh, I've been dealing with, you know, all this crud that I seem to be dealing with. Um, so I haven't been sleeping very well, but I have been getting up in the middle of the night and doing some study so um, I have some study that I want to talk to you about in regards to this mica too because I did find some interesting stuff that I would like to bring forth to you uh, let me pull it up here so I can discuss it with you so I wanted to go into a little bit in regards to um, <clears throat> mica 2 which is what I did some studies on in the middle of the night uh, the other night and it's just this scripture right here um, that I want to talk to you about. It's not anything else in Micah 5, just this one in Micah 5 2. And um, so let's let's read what it says. It says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from from of old from everlasting so now when we think of um when we think of uh bethlehem and um ephrata that's a very interesting word because it's actually two coming together let's take a look and see um what the other um scripture is showing if it's given me because uh, any because this is the aw uh, this is the authorized um, King James version here it says but thou Bethlehem Ephrata uh, though you be little among the thousands of Judah yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth have been from old from everlasting okay so basically, we're seeing here that this is speaking, and I'm going to go back into Blue Letter, um, that he is speaking, um, that this is speaking that the Lord is coming from the tribes of Judah and Ephratah. Okay? Um, Bethlehem, we know the Lord came from Judah, um, and Ephratah. So that's pretty interesting. When you go back and read a little bit in regards to this, it is trying to identify. It's saying it's such a small little area in regards to the thousands that are that are of Judah. Yet out of that small little area, who's coming forth? It's going to be this particular person. And so, um, 
And so what I decided to do when I was going in to do my um, to do my study was just to go ahead and take a look at some of these strong words that are coming up here. And I thought this was really interesting because when I clicked into Bethlehem Judah, um, when I clicked into this 1035, it comes up uh, Bethlehem Judah. OK, um, and that is really interesting because then it's showing Judah along with the Ephrata. OK, so it is showing two. OK, two places is what it's showing here. And so when I went in and, and looked at this um, and it's showing Bethlehem Judah, it's not even putting a space here. It's identifying it as one word, which is very, very interesting. Um, so it is saying with this particular word, 3063, um, which means praised. It means for Judah, it means praised. Um, um, well, what in the world? That's not what I wanted. I wanted to look at, uh, let's see. Bethlehem, Judah. Oh, here it is, 3063. Um, it means Judah praised. Okay. So when we're looking at Bethlehem, Judah, okay, the 10, we know that the 3063 means praised, means Judah praised, and that we know the 1035, uh, which was the original one that we clicked into, um, 1035. Um, it says house of bread. Okay. House of bread. Birthplace of our Savior. House of bread. Bethlehem. But it is talking about Judah. Okay. When we look at Ephrata, um, we see here a place of fruitfulness. We see it's another name for Bethlehem or could be another name for Bethlehem. But what is really interesting here, what I found when I was going into the Strong's Hebrew, um, I was looking for this for quite some time and I was able to find it. Um, it means, when you look at that, we were looking at Strong's 67, uh, 672, right? This is what, what was coming up for Ephrata. Um, it is showing the six strong, the Strong's for 672, Hebrews 672. So when I went into um, the Strong's again to do a little bit more in-depth, I'm finding that the Strong's 669 is the masculine form of 672, which means son of Joseph, but it also means the tribe descended from him. Okay? The tribe descended from him. So... What this can equal to for this word, Ephrata, it's the tribal name for Joseph. So when we see that he comes from Bethlehem, Judah, in Micah 5, uh, verse 2, for, for Jesus, the first time that he came, um, then we also see that he's from Ephrata, which is the tribal name for Joseph. So yet again, we're seeing how this is connected to the to the evening lamb, and we're seeing how it is connected to the trespass offering, where he's coming from, right? Um, I thought that was real interesting. So I continued to go on, <clears throat> and I was looking at um, the Strong's Four. Though you be little. Okay, well, let's take a look. Little, what did it mean? Uh, it says here, insignificant, young, younger, youngest. Okay, um, so is that younger, youngest, meaning somebody is older, right? So again, I still had this in my mind. I was still keeping the two boys in my mind, those two twins in my mind. What's going on here? And it says here, so thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little, be the youngest, the smallest, okay? Among the thousands, well, let's just pull up what the thousands was. And it's just saying that this is a specific number. Um, but interesting here that it says that this is the same, okay? This Aleph, take a look, guys, what this is saying. Aleph, right? Um, Aleph. 
which is the first letter of the alphabet. I believe it's spelled Aleph, A-L-E-P-H, um, which I thought was the first letter of the alphabet. But this is the same as Hebrew 504. And if we click into Hebrew 504, then we see that that means the ox, right? And um, that was really interesting because, guys, remember the four faces on the cherubim that were all around the throne. You had the face of the man, the eagle, the ox, and the, um, and the, um, oh, gosh, the, um, whatever the fourth one is. I'm, I'm coming up a blank, but you guys know what I'm talking about. So interesting that this is, okay, so the 505, the number, okay, a left, right, is also the same as 504, which I thought was interesting because it's coming up um, oxen, and then when I clicked into, because it's from this again, 502, and I've, I've clicked into this, and take a look, um, take a look what this says. Um, where does it say to join together? Hang on one second, I'm looking for it. Here it is. To join together. To associate, to join together a thousand, a family, okay, to associate. So I thought that was real interesting, guys. This is all dealing with the oxen. Look about the sense of yoking or taming. Well, what is that scripture? You know, it, if yoke up with me and, and you know, if you're, if you're with me, the yoke will be light, right? Or what is that scripture? Let's pull it up. Let's see what it, it says here in Matthew 11. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, guys, I'm telling you, you know. I love the Lord Jesus Christ and I can so associate with this right here because this is what he has shown me. Um, this is what he has shown me. Now I know there's different sides to him, but I can tell you, I can attest to this right here. I can attest to that spirit right there. And so what I'm finding very, very interesting here is when we're looking at this and we're seeing the ox and we know that when they are training young oxen, they hook them up, they yoke them up with a bigger one so that they can train the younger one, right? That's what they do. And here we come back to Aleph. It's the singular which is found in the name of the first letter, Aleph or Alpha. I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. Very interesting information. So guys, when I'm telling you when you're going to be you're going to be digging into this, I found a lot of good information just as just going through the one Micah 5 2, just going through this one particular one. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> coming back here, it says here um, of these shall he come forth, and this particular word 3318 means to uh, means to germinate, to expand, to go out, um, to exit, to go forth with purpose or for a result, to lead out, to deliver, um, and um, we definitely want to take a look at. Let me see. Um, I'm trying to read my own notes here. I, I don't know. Did I? I must have wrote in tongues or something. I, I'm having a difficulty reading. Uh, look at Strong's definition definition for legend. It says, um, "Let's see. Do we have anything in here for legend? And if not, we'll just go right in and take a look at it. Um, definition for legend. Let's let me pull it up." Well, guys, I was looking for uh, my strongest definition for legend, but I'm having a little bit of difficulty putting my hands on it. So um, I guess you guys are going to have to look that up um, on your own. All right, so let's just go ahead and continue uh, finishing up this particular scripture because um, it says that he shall, he shall then come forth unto me, that is to be ruler. Okay, so this ruler just, you know, it is what you think it, think it means. It just means to 
uh, to rule a ruler, to reign, dominion, governor, power. Um, we go on back and it says in Israel, and um, we know what Israel means. It means God prevails. Uh, let's go ahead and pull it up here, Israel. Um, it means God prevails. The name of the descendants and the nations of uh, the descendants of Jacob. Uh, interesting. There's that name, Jacob. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind right there. Jacob. And um, he will rule as God. Jisrael. Let's see. Is that down in here? He will rule as God. A symbolic name of Jacob. Also of his posterity, uh, Israel. So let's see. Here it is. He will rule as God, Jisrael, a symbolic name of Jacob and typically of his posterity, Israel. Okay. So now, um, remember guys, when I told you that I had, that the Lord was telling me about the two sons, he was telling me, um, he was telling me that um, they were his, um, that they um, that they are in the womb of Mary, that they are twins, that they are um, they have dual purposes and all of that. Okay, um, when I was by the waterside, um, the Lord gave me the understand that it was James, it was the brother of Jesus, and he was a twin. Okay, now. When I pressed God on the names of these two boys, these two twins that he has been telling us about, he told me two names. I have never submitted this publicly like ever. Um, I have shared it very, very privately, and I've only shared it with just um, maybe one person that I'm aware of. I don't even think I've told any other people, um, but it is just one person. And that the two, those two boys had names. Now, I was being, um, I was, I was pressing the Lord in regards to this. It was on a day that I had been in the spirit. Most of the day I had received several different messages from the Lord God that day. Um, I understood that one of the twins names was Jacob. Okay. I understood that one of the twins names was Jacob. Okay. I also, through great duress, and trying to hear through great static and what have you, um, I I believe the name of the second one is Aaron. Okay? So I'm going to tell you what I believe the Lord told me. I'm almost 100% positive I heard the name Jacob for one. The other one, under great duress and attack and static and trying to stop me from understanding what's going on, I believe I heard the name Aaron. Okay, so let's talk about the name Jacob, and let's talk about the name Aaron, okay? Um, because this is important that we, that we listen to, that we take a look at this. So if we define the name, right, Jacob, then we understand that the name Jacob means supplants, the heel, and we knew we know that in scripture um when the two twins were born in scripture right we knew that jacob was the holder of the heel he was the supplanter he was the holder of the heel remember that um and then if we look at let me just put this up in a new tab because we're going to want to look at that if we look at the name of aaron the name of Aaron means high mountain, exalted, okay? Um, we also know that Aaron was representative of the, of the priests, okay? He was representative of the priests. And so, um, and so that's what I was given last year. I've never told anybody what the names of the two, what the two names of the boys were. Um, I know Jacob 100%, Aaron through great duress, but I believe that's what I heard, okay? So Jacob and Aaron was what I was given last year uh, in August. So now, while I'm going through looking at this, and I come to this particular part where it's talking about Jacob, right? 
in Micah 5 verse 2 and then it's saying um, that he will rule as God okay Jizrael a symbolic name of Jacob also typically uh, of his posterity Israel right okay so he's a contender a soldier of God so this is what this is what connected me into okay now wait a minute the Lord told me last year about those two boys names that I've never told anybody else okay one of them was Jacob so when I went into um, behind the name for the name Jacob right just when I was still doing all of that digging into it um, I, I want to just show you something here because um, this is this is pretty interesting so when you look at Jacob it's talking about uh, later called Israel it's the son of Isaac and Rebecca um, he was born holding his twin brother Esau's heel okay so holder of the heel or supplanter because he twice deprived his brother of his rights of uh, as the firstborn son so take a look here English names Jacob and James derived from the same source with James coming from the Latin okay Jacob is a Jewish name and the variant James was used among the Christians so when you look at the name Jacob the name is actually it means James guys the Lord when he called me to the water side and he first started telling me about the brother of Jesus about the twin he said the name James he said the name James okay so if I go in here and I just click into um, let me see if it'll let me go into James here we're going to be looking at the name James okay the New Testament Greek form of the Hebrew name Jacob it's the exact same name it means the same thing it's the same thing so when I sought the Lord God when he when I was asking him about the two boys one whole year before he called me to the waterside and told me James okay one whole year before I'm asking him about these two boys the twins what are their names who are they what womb are they in what you know what are their purpose you know I'm asking all these different questions all throughout the year and a half uh, last year and a half and um, and he told me Jacob I know for a hundred percent the other uh, I, I'm gonna say I'm probably about 80 percent sure the other name was Aaron okay and so now when I'm going through and doing a study in regards to Micah 5 I see that there's a connection between the names but a year after he told me those two names of those two boys he called me to the waterside and he told me about the brother of Jesus the twin and the name of James So guys, um, you need to go through these studies and you need to look at the morning lamb and you need to look at the evening lamb and you need to look at all of these words that are in uh, the Strong's and go back and look at to see what the origin is and what does it mean and how is it connecting because guys, this is, this is amazing stuff. So let's look at going forth so let's let's just try and finish this okay because I want to I want to say at least I was uh, I was complete in my study bringing it forth to you but the going forth origin um, the going forth origin let's see uh, where's the origin at it means to spring forth to act uh, to spring to for, to going forth to spring an act or place of going out or forth 
to export a source, a spring, for example, rising sun going forth of a command. Okay, that's what this means. So this is from the old uh, 6924, and that's what I want to pull up. Where is that? The old 6924. Going forth, 4163. Is this the same one? 6924. Mm, that's not going to let me in there. Let me pull it up differently. So going forth, 4163, um, it's from the old 6924, which is where we're at right here. And it says, um, it means East Antiquity Front, that which is before an ancient time of old beginnings. The root here, 6923. to prevent, to come in front. So we were talking about to meet, to come or be in the front, to confront or go before, but to for one to come before, one was in front. Um, we're going to come back out here and we're going to look at the everlasting. Oh, whoops, this is not it. Let's go back here. We're going to look at the everlasting. Now there's two here for everlasting. Um, the three one one seven represents day, time, year. It's a division of time as defined by evening and morning in Genesis one. Guys, take a look at this as defined by evening and morning in Genesis one. Where is that? Um, it's in here somewhere because I wrote down the notes as I was going through. Um, it's, let me tell you what it says. It says, and you guys can go through it. It says, as defined by evening and morning in Genesis 1. Um, so it is identifying a day, a time, a year, and we know that they look at that from evening to evening. But this was really interesting in regards to the wording that it said because it says it's identify, it's defined by evening and morning in Genesis 1. And then for the 5769, because we're, we're talking about the evening and morning lamb, right? We're, we've been talking about them. So 5769 is the last little bit here. And it just means ancient time evermore, always continuous existence, perpetual, indefinite, or unending future eternity. Um, so guys, when I went through this study in the middle of the night, oh, I don't know, Monday night maybe, Monday night of last week, something like that, um, maybe Tuesday, I don't, I don't know, it was one of those nights I couldn't sleep, I went through just Micah 5 verse 2, and I looked at every single one of these words, and I went through to try and identify, okay, now wait a minute, what about this, what about that? We see that there's two places here. And we see that it was linking to the evening lamb. So when you see this kind of information here where it says he comes from Bethlehem, Judah, and he comes from Ephratah, which is the tribal name for Joseph, and then I'm giving you the scripture, and I'm showing you where I'm finding it, and I'm showing you what I went into to try and look at it. You guys, it's all right there. It takes a little time to go through and dig out because you have to go through and look at every word, but isn't that what the Lord Jesus Christ told us to do? Is that not what he told us to do? He said, take a look at every single word. Look at the definition and understand what each word means and dig into it that way. That's what he wanted us to do. And that's what he showed us we should do. So, guys, I'm going to provide this for you. Okay. Um, it's going to look just like this. Uh, you sh these links should be clickable for you. I hope that they are. Um, but you guys can go through and take a look at this and then expand on this study. But, guys, I'm telling you, when we're talking about the two comings, one being a morning lamb and a sin offering that's already come, and one that is the trespass offering that is forthcoming. Guys, it's important for us to know that there's two comings, okay? 
there's two times. There's two lambs, the morning lamb and the evening lamb. Um, all right, so guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off. Thank you for listening to it. I appreciate y'all coming back and giving me a little bit of time. Um, oh, no, you know what? I got something else I want to read to you. This is um, this is a, a t this is um, a summary that was sent to me in regards to all of this information that I think is going to be real interesting. Um, so this is po this is pointing to the unknown uh, coming second coming. Okay, the unknown second coming that most people are not aware of, the evening lamb, the trespass offering. Um, so God is in the process of dealing with sin on earth, but also in, in the heavens. Earth is the battlefield. The word became flesh as the morning lamb and died for the sins of men of earth. The Godhead consists of the father, the word and the spirit. Only a member of the Godhead can die for sins, whether on earth or in the heavens. To handle the sins of the heavens, God sends the evening lamb to die for the sins housed in the heavens. These are God's two witnesses. The two cherubim that sit in the Holy of Holies of Moses' wilderness tabernacle, both beaten out of one piece of fine gold, as the only begotten Son is taken out of the Father, and out of, out of one comes both the Word and the Spirit. It is represented in the human body as the DNA, making a replica of itself in the messenger RNA. This is shown by the two goats of Leviticus 16, whereby lots are cast to see which goat is going to do which work, as they, both, as they are both sinless and either goat could do either work. And remember, only a member of the Godhead is sinless and can die for sins. The one goat dies for sins of the earth, yet people still sin. They confess those sins, and those sins are housed in the holy place in the heavens. The other goat, the scapegoat, is held in reserve until the end of the year or the end of the age and has all those sins of the holy place put on him and he is sent to earth as the evening lamb. This is the Spirit of God who will lead and guide into all truth, the third member of the Godhead. He is the one spoken of in Acts 3, 19 and 20 as the refresher who the Lord will send and he carries the family name Yeshua. God with us, the anointed. God is in the grave for two and a half days as the morning lamb. The other is the evening lamb. He spends three and a half days in the grave for the sins of the heavens. This is the six working days that the prince must finish. In Ezekiel 46, 1, Leviticus 7, 7, there is one law for the sin offering and the trespass offering, and that law is death. Leviticus 23, the one dies in the spring and the one dies in the fall. The one dies in the fall as the high atonement. The two witnesses in Revelations 11 are the olive trees, and they are found in Zechariah chapter 4. In 1 Kings 6, the cherubim are made out of the olive tree, and in the thousand-year reign of Ezekiel's temple, the one cherubim has two faces, the face of a lion and the face of a man. These represent the Word and the Spirit, the two witnesses of the Godhead. In Hosea 6, 2, after two days, he will raise us up. And these same two are found in Revelations chapter 11. At the first coming, the word is made flesh. He always spoke, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will lead and guide into all truth. At the second coming, the spirit becomes incarnate. The first coming, he's unleavened bread. The second coming, he is leavened bread. These two sons of Luke chapter 15, as represented by the two types of blood in the body, arterial and venial, are further represented in the heavens by the constellation Gemini and the twins, plus the constellation Pisces, one fish headed east, the other headed north. These are the two from Isaiah 41. The way a thing begins, it must end, for God never makes a mistake. In the book of Genesis, the priest's name is Levi, and in the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, the man who has the covenant is Levi. In the first book of the New Testament, the writer's real name is Levi, which is Matthew, and we looked at that. We, sh we showed you that. And finally, in the last book of the New Testament, Revelations, 
The writer of Revelations 19 has a new name that only he knows. And if it follows the pattern, then it has to be Levi. So guys, we know there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to the patterns. We know there's a lot to numbers. We know there's a lot to colors. We know there's a lot to a lot of different things that the Lord provides for us. Um, everything is significant. You could be, you know, just doing your work. All of a sudden, the Lord will tell you, look and see what time it is. You'll look at the time and he'll say, look it up in Strong's. I mean, how many times has he done that? Guys, we know about the gematria, which, guys, listen, I don't know a whole lot about. Uh, there are a lot of folks out there that know a whole lot about these numbers. And they, and the Lord talks to, to them through numbers and they understand it. Uh, I don't understand it, but they do because that's how the Lord talks to them. Uh, you know, the Lord talks to all of us in different ways and we all get little pieces and parts to this puzzle. So guys, I just wanted to provide um, this stuff to you. Um, a lot of this was gathered and put together by uh, by a friend of mine, and um, and he has helped me to um, to pull some of this together, and I'd like to thank him for that. Um, but guys, I just want to say, if you're interested in this, I will provide a Google, a Google Docs link, and you guys can go ahead and start digging into this yourself. Um, the scriptures speak for themselves, guys. It really does. So anyway, guys, I just want to say thank you. God bless you. Please stay under his wing. Um, and guys, you know that that last video still holds true. Please just stay under his wing. Stay repenting. Keep your heart clean. Be prepared um, because the time is so very short. I love you all.